I just filmed a video on the new rear setup of the MUX and I figured why well, I got it all here and out I may as well just do an overview of the whole car which I haven't done before and people have asked about it heaps of times go through the sort of kept waiting till we do various mods and different things to get a bit more build up but it's getting there now go through all the different things that dad's done to it over the last how long have you had it now four years have you four years you haven't had it four years it's a 16 model the car we're, we're looking at is a 2016 model isuzu muf i bought it up at ipswich in queensland hail damage and got a good sum of money off it and thought this is the way to go because i'll more than hail damage this car so it's equipped with a three liter isuzu engine which they use in their trucks isuzu and what a five speed automatic or six five speed automatic i believe they went on the next model to a six speed in 2017. and this is pre dpf as well isn't it it is yeah, yeah so yeah, the last the dpf in the last 17. yeah the last before they put the dpfs in them coil springs all around disc brakes all around yeah yeah solid axle rear independent front suspension starting at the front with the bar work bull bar x rocks bull bar which are australian made i think i think they're made over in western australia you went this one because they were lighter that was the main reason wasn't it looks it was. and they gave a really good good departure angle as well especially kind of uh coming up to rock steps various things like that couple of bash plates underneath there custom off i think yours are you, do you know what brand yours are no i think they're custom off-road accessory bash plates three mil stainless steel bull bar obviously gives you a place to mount your various different things as well nine and a half thousand pound synthetic rope rather than steel rope lighter easier to use generally considered safer you don't have any spotlights you don't know do you want to get any or you don't I do. care yeah i do want to i was actually talking to the auto electrician this morning about spotlights yeah so maybe get some spotlights eventually radio same one i have the oricom Oricom UHF. This is interchangeable. So at the moment it is three or three and a half DBI. But you can unscrew this and add an extension on, and then it becomes six or six and a half DBI. The rock sliders are from Fab Works, a Queensland mob. Yeah, Southern Cross Fab Works, which have stood the test. Yeah, because you've beat them up pretty good now, and you've had the whole weight of your car on them, and they haven't failed no, yet. No, they haven't bent or. A little displaced. bit scratched and dented and that's about it. Proper lo rock sliders, not they're not like steel side steps or anything, they're rock sliders. So basically they can take the whole weight of your car, you can bash them and you can't break them. I don't have a rear bar on this car, however the tyre has proved a bit of a saver at times, dropping off steep banks. The exhaust I got fitted to this car in early days is a 3 inch Torquet stainless. It gave a bit of power boost low down into that mid-range you felt that that little bit extra and it, it it has freed it up and it runs better with this exhaust on it coming through to the engine bay which is filthy because you never wash it have you <laughs> ever washed the engine bay it has been washed is this still from tassie or is this from around here no from around here the local tracks have been wet lately and i've snuck out a few afternoons and um enjoyed the mud so the engine bay is reasonably standard. Um, what have you done in here? One times oil catch can. There's, that's the oil catch can there? Yep, it is. Pro, pro vent. Pro vent. In, oil catch in, can. In early days, as soon as I started hearing about this engine's carboning up, I thought that's got to be the way to go with these um, high pressure diesels. Do you get a fair bit out of it? You might get half a cup full after 10,000 yeah that type of thing and then fuel filter secondary fuel filter safety mechanism to polluted diesels do you know whether that's pre or post factory filter pre i think fuel tank to that to that to that to your main one to your engine yeah as i understand it now that's a bit of a debatable topic of whether to do them pre or post factory there's arguments for either side either one you go you're going to be happy you're going to you're going to be better off. You got your breathers? Yeah, breathers, diff gearbox, which stops the entry of 
water and sludge on deep creek crossings. Iron Man, those are Iron Man breathers. And you got the breather there for your winch as well. Factory air box with a safari snorkel, all sealed up for water and dust and mud and different things. It's just about dark. I've had to quickly run back down the shed. I remember we didn't really do the inside of the car because there's not anything going on inside of the car. Like it's all basic setup as is factory. The only thing that we didn't say was the UHF radio. Car's an automatic, automatic gearbox. You got your uh, four high, two high, four high, four low selector there. And then mounted just down next to the seat there is the Oricom UHF two way, just a basic basic radio connected to the antenna at the front there. Tires and rims. Still got the factory Isuzu alloy rims on them. They fit the tires and what are the tires? They're open country Toyo mud tires. 265 75R16. Just under 32 inch, I think it's about 31.7 inch. And you've had these on the whole time. They've got 45,000 Ks. I think there's another triple two there yet. While we're on tyres, we'll do the suspension setup as well. So suspension two inch, is that right? Two inch lift, which is the likes of Dobinson springs and Bill Steen shocks. Four springs, four shocks. Yep, and the difference was remarkable. The first trip I did on this truck was to Morton Island and it bounced around awfully. Once I went to that suspension, it changed the whole thing and it became an entirely better off-road vehicle and it was extremely noticeable because i remember you said that like it was just bottoming out and floating all over the place yeah and hitting those sand bumps and that wasn't it yeah and it, it just kept going the suspension just had that continuing slap you'd come off a bump and thought you're in another three and you're on smooth road <laughs> on top roof rack awning combination king's awning is that right yep these king's awnings are kind of the cheap go-to awning what what are you would you get another one or yeah, yeah, I'd happily get another one. It's been good. It stood the test. Roof rack, Rhino platform. You have the sides on yours, don't you? Yeah, the yeah. sides. Yep. It's the track mounted, so it's drilled into the roof, but it's the new system. I can't, I can't remember what they're called. Like, you don't use it much, but... No, I'm, I'm waiting on that long desert trip or that top end trip. This is what I was just filming a separate video on the whole new drawer fridge dual battery system in the back. This is a sort of a proper full touring camping setup. I've travelled long and hard for a long time with an Esky, so this is all pretty flash for me. <laughs> Finally go on the big upgrade, instead of camping with a bucket and an Esky and a tent. Yeah, going all yeah a couple of my mates that I've travelled with lifelong are laughing at all this stuff, saying, <laughs> what are you doing with all that flash gear? We went around Australia on an 11 month trip with an Esky. Drifted drawers from Gloucester, from Luton, and Gloucester. Handmade down there, what are they? They're wooden drawers with whatever you call it. What's this, like marine carpet or something? Yeah, yeah, they're carpet cover. Single drawer, pull out. Table on top, which pulls out. So you've got a table there you can use or you can pull it out if you want. You can pull it all the way out and set it up. Wooden table, adjustable legs, so you can just quick and easy use it there as need be or pull it out and sit it where you need to at camp. You got the fridge over the other side. It's a good height there. You can still see and reach in and everything. That's what I said about having it down low there. Now at the back of the drawers, behind the fridge, you got a little section here that's in behind the seats. So pull the seats out and this is where our full dual battery setup is with dad's full battery setup to run. Basically the main is to run the fridge. And then we've also got some outlets you can charge your phone, run camp lights, various bits and pieces. Now we did this through Safari Global. We got in contact with them and they uh, in sort of send them a des design your system and they can come up with a design that will basically perfectly suit your needs it's a hundred amp hour slimline lithium battery and then this is where all the wiring DC DC charger is so from the engine bay from the battery wire runs through the passenger feet firewall down through the carpet up into the back here it's been wired in through behind the fridge 30 amp hour Victron DC DC charger, which will give 30 amps per hour roughly as you drive. Got all your fuses, fuse box here for your different things so you can just pull your seat out, change fuses if need be. Pull your seat forward, only takes 10 seconds. Uh, you got your shunt there, 
all your wiring and that's basically to run the whole system nice and simple and then in the back here you got a victron display unit that'll give you like um how much percentage you have left it'll give you amps and volts and then just in there we got a dual usb outlet and a 12 volt outlet as well in there next to the fridge to charge things we'll do a few questions to finish up first one being what do you want to do to it next probably driving lights on the right. front of it is the most likely next move i'm hoping you'll say one thing that i get asked about every single day and it's driving me mad locker yeah yeah <laughs> it's been an ongoing thing the just, locker just about every single video he's in i get 20 people say when are you getting the locker 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 i'm sick of hearing about it yeah so, I've, had a, I've had a lot of fun without a locker yeah the videos won't be as entertaining yeah so we lose that side of it yeah i i believe i eventually will get a locker we've got home on our trips whether it be winch or whatever and yeah to me four wheel driving was something i've had to learn as an older driver coming from a fast driving experience with driving as a younger fella having had a, a rally car and race motorbikes and that type of thing and i thought i'd nail this four wheel driving but i haven't it's been uh, difficult for me to get into it, but I've really enjoyed it and it's been great. Because you've sort of done bits of forward driving through your life, but nothing like what we do now. Yeah, yeah, not this... Uh, harder stuff. Harder stuff. I was onto the fast side of both of those and I thought this forward driving would be very easy, but I've certainly found out otherwise. <laughs> it's different it's when you're slow. Yeah, all this stuff done slow, to be able to place those wheels in the right place has proved a ongoing learning experience for me of which I've enjoyed all the way. It takes takes a while to learn to read the road in the track in front of you and where your wheels are going to be to keep all those four wheels on the ground so they don't start spinning. Especially without that locking. Yeah, gear. without a diff lock. I think you're better off learning how to four-wheel drive without a diff lock once you learn sure it's going to really step things up for you and make life easier but i think if you're first getting into four-wheel drive and you get there in a twin locked vehicle it um it kind of takes away that learning experience of how to manage your vehicle and the environment and your suspension without a locker you really learn to drive your vehicle without a locker when you're first getting into four-wheel driving and then i think once you learn then you can step it up because lockers can be dangerous as well like you're twin locked your car won't stop driving nearly till it's on its roof how many k's has it got it now has uh around forty-seven thousand k's blew the front diff up blew the front diff yeah we're on this track for about five hours and done two k's if that a k and a half it's pretty much tow tow up the Little hills, winch up the steep hills, and he can drive through the flat downhills and bits. Yeah, new, I got new front diff under warranty. Yeah, yeah. And that was when it took us seven hours to get you three kilometres yeah, in two wheel drive. Back out of Barrington. Blew the whole casing. There was a hole in the casing. Yeah, there was actually a. a yeah, it had blown the external casing on the front diff. It's still debatable whether you were driving too hard or not. I think yeah. it's just a real, I don't know, it could have been a bit of a weak spot there or a real unlucky moment. Yeah, yeah, I've always had that bit of a feeling I held it too long, but it was a bit of a learning thing. And probably our biggest high we ever had out of this four-wheel drive and so far was when we reached good going and, and set ourselves free that afternoon. That was a great moment for us. Everything else has been very sound. It's been a great car. I haven't had to make a suspension adjustment or a tightening on the suspension system in it. It's, it's held up all the way.
Ha, ha, ha.